Enterococcus. It is a gram-positive coccus. Entero means intestine and coccus means pharyngeal. You know, might be thinking, is it present in intestine? We'll talk about that in habitat section. This is a diplococcus occurring in chain-like arrangement. As you can see in this picture, these cocci are forming chains. This is actually the vancomycin-resistant enterococci. We'll touch upon that later in today's video. This bacterium is also called lactic acid bacterium and it belongs to family Streptococcaceae. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we are going to talk about enterococcus in detail. If you've missed my recent video that's on strep agalactiae, be sure to check it out. But before getting started, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's dive deeper into the video. Enterococcus is catalase negative. For those of you guys who are not familiar, what is catalase? It is an enzyme released by certain bacteria and is not released by certain other bacteria. Enterococcus being the one who does not release that enzyme. That's why it is catalase negative. We'll talk about that in detail in lab diagnosis section. Enterococcus is gamma hemolytic bacteria. Gamma hemolytic are those bacteria who are responsible for doing no hemolysis on blood agar. But they sometimes do partial hemolysis. That's why they might be considered alpha. Enterococcus grows in 6.5% salt solution and it belongs to Lansfield group D classification. I'm going to talk about the classification in detail in just a moment. Enterococcus is PYR positive. PYR means pyrrolidonal arylamidase. PYR test is a qualitative procedure for determining the ability of streptococci to enzymatically hydrolyze l pyrrolidonal beta naphthalamide. Enterococcus is a facultative anaerobe and it can grow on bile salts. That differentiates entero and non entero strapped lecture outline. We are done with the introduction. Now we'll be looking at classification, morphology, habitat and transmission, pathogenesis and clinical finding, treatment, lab diagnosis, prevention and at the end as usual we'll review the lecture. Classification. Streptococcus are further classified based on serology, Lancer classification and as we know that enterococcus belong to group D. And also on the basis of hemolysis and biochemistry. On the basis of hemolysis, strep bacteria are further classified into alpha hemolytic which are responsible for doing partial hemolysis, beta hemolytic which do complete hemolysis on blood agar and gamma hemolytic which are responsible for doing no hemolysis. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on apoptosis sensitivity into strep pneumonia and strep weirdens and beta hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on base tracing sensitivity into group A for example strep pyogenes and group B for example strep agalactiae. But the gamma hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on growth in 6.5% salt solution. If a bacterium grows in that solution it is enterococci which is further classified into enter Enterococcus fecalis and Enterococcus faecium. And on the other hand, if a bacterium does not grow in 6.5% salt solution, it is non enterococci which is called Strap Bowes or Strap Galloniticus. For memorization purposes, non enterococcus does not grow in 6.5% salt solution. Morphology Enterococcus is spherical or ovoid in shape. It occurs in pairs or short chains. As you can see in this picture, it is diplococcus occurring in short chains, just like that one. It's diameter varies from 0.5 to 1 micrometer and it is purple or gray in color. Structure. Enterococcus is environment resistant. For example, it can resist high temperatures, high pH, high salt concentrations and bile resistance. That's why this can differentiate between entero and non-enterococcus. This bacterium has got thick peptidoglycan cell wall. That's why it is positive because this thick peptidoglycan cell wall retains the dye. And enterococcus is encapsulated, non-motile and non-spore forming. Habitat. This bacterium is found in GI tract hence named Enterococcus faecium and Enterococcus faecalis. But it can also be found in gentle urinary tract. If to be specific, this would be found in GI tract. Transmission. This bacterium is transmitted via fecal oral route and the reasons are fecal contamination of food or water, not washing hands after using toilet, then shaking those dirty hands with people and making other surfaces dirty and other people touch those surfaces with their clean hands. Surfaces can be doors or electronics, etc. And nosocomial infections are those infections like in hospitals, people are dealing with feces. What what kind of people deal with feces? Definitely those those people who work in labs and there are certain medical devices that can transfer that infection like blood vessel 
、uh, catheters or urinary catheters, and there are certain procedures that can also play an important role in the transmission of enterococcus infections like GI or genital urinary surgery. Pathogenesis. We are going to talk about virulence factors. The first one is intrinsic resistance to penicillin G and cephalosporin. Enterococcus cannot be treated with penicillin and cephalosporin. The second virulence factor that is really high yield is Van gene. This is vancomycin gene. Enterococcus acquire that and becomes the vancomycin resistant enterococci (VRE). Okay, let me explain that to you. Normally, what happens that the peptidoglycan D ala D ala of the bacterium gets converted into cross-linked peptidoglycan that makes the bacterial cells impenetrable. And what happens? Vancomycin prevents that cross-linking. Because this cross-linking is bad for humans and is good for bacterium, because immune cells will not be able to kill that bacterium. So when vancomycin prevents that cross-linking, bacterium is easily killed and the infection is vanished. What happens when the bacteria acquire the Van gene? It converts the D-ala D-ala portion of peptidoglycan into D-ala D lactate, which prevents the action of vancomycin on the cross-linked peptidoglycan. And here, vancomycin becomes ineffective, and bacteria ignores the effects of vancomycin. This is how the vancomycin-resistant enterococci are formed. Now let's talk about the clinical findings. So, vancomycin-resistant enterococci, the VRE, are responsible for causing nosocomial infections, subacute bacterial endocarditis, UTIs like cystitis, pyelonephritis, and certain biliary diseases like cholecystitis, surgical wound infections like cellulitis, skin abscess. Intra-abdominal or pelvic abscesses. Different diseases have different symptoms. So the top one in the list is bloodstream infections. They will have symptoms like fever, chills, hypotension, tachycardia. Endocarditis will have symptoms like fever, heart murmur, and malaise. Urinary tract has symptoms like dysuria, urinary frequency, urinary urgency. Next one in the list is cystitis. It will show suprapubic pain. The next one is pyelonephritis. It will have flank pain, fever, and chills, nausea, and vomiting. For skin, these symptoms will be swelling, erythema, tenderness, purulent discharge. For biliary tract, there will be fever, pain, and jaundice because liver is involved there. And for intra-abdominal and pelvic abscesses, there will be fever, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. Lab diagnosis: We'll need samples of blood, urine, pus, and obviously feces because this bacterium inhabits GI tract. On gram staining, it will reveal that this is gram positive because it's purple colored. Under microscopy, this bacterium is spherical or void in shape, is diplococcus, and its diameter varies from 0.5 to 1 micrometer. As you can see in this picture, this bacterium is forming short chains, is diplococcus, and is purple in color. As I told you in the introduction, that we'll be talking about catalase test. Here we are. Catalase test. What happens in that test that Any bacterium who is responsible for releasing catalase enzyme will convert hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, and oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. What happens when there is no catalase? Hydrogen peroxide will not be converted into water and oxygen, and there will be no bubbles. That's why this test is negative for Enterococcus, and no bubbles are formed. There's another test that is bile esculin test. This one is done to differentiate enterococci and non-enterococci group D strep. For that test, we've got certain material like peptone, beef extract, bile, esculin, ferric citrate, and agar. In the presence of bile, bacteria hydrolyze the esculin into glucose and esculin, and these two. Then, along with ferric ions or the ferric citrates, within 24 to 48 hours, forms a Black diffusible complex, whether on a petri dish or on a test tube, and this will show that whether the bacterium is enterococcus or is non-enterococcus. Culture on blood agar will reveal that this is gamma hemolysis. But gamma hemolytic bacteria are responsible for doing no hemolysis. That's why, and colonies will be gray or white in color. As you can see in this picture, colonies are gray and white in color. It is actually not the colonies culture petri dish. It is. A petri dish for showing resistant and sensitivity to certain antibiotics, right? I just put that there to show you the color. As you can see, this one. Other tests that we can do for the infections caused by enterococcus are echocardiogram. That is done to find out the bacterial vegetations on heart walls. The second one is urinalysis. That is done to find the P 
pH of the urine, if it is greater than 7, it is alkaline, whether there's pyuria or bacteria. And ultrasound and CT scan are also done that reveal the biliary tract infections and abdominal and pelvic abscesses. Treatment. Enterococcus is treated with three types of drugs. The first one is beta-lactams. Like penicillin and ampicillin, this is going to treat enterococcus faecalis, but not the faecium. The second ones are aminoglycosides, for example, gentamicin or streptomycin. These are going to treat enterococcus faecalis, but not the enterococcus faecium. The third one is vancomycin. As enterococcus faecalis has got resistant strains, the vancomycin resistant strains, so this will not be treated with vancomycin, but enterococcus faecium will be treated with vancomycin. So now the question arises that which drug will be treating the vancomycin-resistant enterococci? So for that purpose, we've got linzolid, daptomycin, and tigacycline. For preventing enterococcus, hand washing after using bathroom is really essential. Practicing good hygiene and maintaining a healthy lifestyle are also very helpful. Alright guys, let's review everything really quick. The organism is enterococcus, it is responsible for causing nosocomial infections, subacute bacterial endocarditis, UTIs like cystitis, pyelonephritis, and biliary infections like cholecystitis. And it is transmitted via fecal oral route and human beings are the hosts. And the primary location is GI tract, but it can also be found in gentry urinary tract. This organism is diagnosed based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, and catalase test. And for treatment, vancomycin-resistant enterococcus is to eat with linzolid or daptomycin. And non-vancomycin-resistant enterococcus is to eat with ampicillin. And it can also be treated with vancomycin because it is not vancomycin resistant. And if it's penicillin allergic, then we'll also use ampicillin. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. You can follow me on my Instagram, Medzokruf. And hopefully I'll see you soon in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.